I'm going to give a review of the Bank of America Alaska Airlines card and whether or not this card is worth getting. What's up, Wise Flyers? Welcome to another video. If you're new here and you want to learn how to travel anywhere in the world almost free by using credit cards and travel points, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss a thing. The Alaska Airlines card has a lot of value to offer, even if you don't plan on going to Alaska or live in Alaska itself. In this video, I'm going to give a review of the Alaska Airlines card, show you some of the best ways to redeem the miles, and then give my opinion of whether or not this card is worth getting. First, let's start with the sign-up bonus. You get 40,000 Alaska Airline miles after completing the minimum spending of $2,000 in 90 days with an annual fee of $75. Now, I know this sign-up bonus is a little lower than the other cards that we talk about, but the miles are really valuable, and I'll show you some specific examples later on in the video of how you could redeem them for the most value. Along with the sign-up bonus, you also get companion fare. And with the companion fare, it costs $99 plus the taxes. Taxes are any, are starting at $22, so basically you're paying $121. And this could be used for paid coach airfare only on Alaska airline flights. I'll go into more details of the companion fare later on as well. Some of the other benefits that you get with this card is free check bags for up to six passengers, and usually the price is $30 per bag per person. You earn three miles per dollar spent every time you book Alaska Airlines, and then you get one mile per dollar spent everywhere else. There is no blackout dates when you redeem them, and there's no limit to the number of miles that you could earn. Now, let's break down that companion fare. So you're getting the companion fare the first year once you complete that sign-up bonus and every year that you're paying the $75 annual fee, you get that companion fare as well. To use the companion fare, you search for an itinerary for two people on an Alaska Airlines flight and then once you apply the coupon code that is automatically deposited into your Alaska Airlines account, the second passenger is just $99 plus the taxes and fees. With the companion fare, you can't use this with the Alaska Airlines miles. It could only be done with cash. So the best way to get value out of the companion fare is to go for higher priced flights. So if a, for number's sake, if a flight cost $500, and so for two people it would cost $1,000, basically you're only paying $500 plus $99 and the taxes instead of having to pay $1,000. So you're able to save a lot more money with the higher priced flights. Now, this doesn't mean that you should go for the higher priced flights just because you're saving more money. You should only go for the flights that you really want and making sure that you're getting value out of this companion fare. Now that you know the benefits of this card, let's go over some of the best ways that you could use the 40,000 mile sign-up bonus. For only 30,000 miles, you could get a round trip between New York and Hawaii, uh, which will still give you 10,000 miles left over, or you could get a one-way first-class flight from Chicago to Honolulu, or even two round trips between Chicago and Los Angeles. These are all on Alaska Airlines flights. But I think the best way to get a lot of value out of Alaska Airlines miles is to book free stopovers on one-way tickets, which is very rare for airlines these days. Really quick, the difference between a stopover and a layover, a layover is less than 24 hours, a stopover is more than 24 hours. So for example, you could go from New York to Hawaii on Alaska Airlines on a one-way ticket and you could stop in San Jose, California for a week. And then on the way back from Hawaii, so let's say you go back from Hawaii back to New York for only 15,000 Alaska Airlines miles, you could stay in Seattle for a week as well to get another free stopover and you don't have to pay any extra for that stopover. By taking advantage of the free stopover, you could basically extend your vacation and get more destinations at no additional cost. And because you're booking one-way flights with Alaska Airlines, you're basically, uh, you can make it an open jaw, which means that you're flying into one destination or one airport, and it could be the same destination, but you're flying out of a different airport. So you could fly into Kauai, Hawaii, and then fly out of Honolulu. So that would kind of be an example of using free stopovers and an open jaw. Alaska Airlines doesn't belong to any of the three alliances, but it does have a lot of partners that you can take advantage of with these miles. So to use the example with the 40,000 mile sign-up bonus, you could get a one way to India for only 35,000 miles, and that'll be on Japan Airlines, 
or you could get a round trip to Peru in coach and that'll be with American Airlines and that'll only cost 40,000 miles or you could get a one way to Australia in coach on Cathay Pacific and that'll cost 40,000 miles. So you could still take advantage of those partners and get a lot of value out of that sign up bonus. So here comes the big question. Is this card worth getting? So the short term benefits of this card, which is the 40,000 mile sign up bonus, I gave you some examples before you could get a lot of value out of that. I don't recommend using this card for everyday spending because you're only getting one mile per dollar spent unless on the uh, unless you're flying Alaska Airlines often, then you'll get three miles per dollar spent there. If you're going to be using Alaska Airlines at least one time per year, then you could save money there with check bags because it's $30 per bag. And I think the best ongoing benefit for paying that $75 annual fee is the companion fare. As I mentioned before, you can only use the companion fare for Alaska Airlines flights and in order to get good value out of the flights you want the prices of the flights to be a little higher just to get maximum value assuming you have a companion to fly with that companion fare will save you hundreds of dollars each year and it's very easy to recoup that $75 annual fee so basically what it comes down to is whether or not you'll be able to use the companion fare year after year on Alaska Airlines to justify paying that $75 annual fee another thing to note is that Bank of America is a little little more strict on the Alaska Airlines card compared to their other cards. So this card may be a little more difficult to get approved for. You need excellent credit in order to do so. And they don't want to see you applying for a lot of other cards as well. There was a point in time where you could get this card every 30 days. And I feel like they felt the burn from that. And so from once they stopped that, loophole they made sure that it was going to be a lot more difficult to get this card especially for people who are constantly churning cards bank of america limits the number of new cards you can open with them so they have a two three four rule which means that you cannot open more than two bank of america cards in two months three in 12 months and four in 24 months so if you are getting a lot of bank of america cards then this probably isn't the right card for you. So keep that in mind when applying for this card. Also, there is a business version of this card, which almost exactly mimics the same benefits of this card. Same sign of bonus, same other ongoing benefits. So do you think this card is worth getting or not? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to watch more credit card review videos, you could click this playlist over here. Click that link now and I'll see you in the next video.